Welcome to the Revival Center of Paso Robles. We're glad you're here. Our prayer is that you'll be blessed and edified by this message and to be encouraged to live out the full potential of your faith. We are located at 3850 Ramada Drive in Paso Robles, California, and we invite you to join us each Sunday morning at 10 and Wednesday evenings at 7. To learn more about who we are and what we believe, please visit us at alphabeth.org. Now, please open your Bible as Pastor Gabe begins teaching today's Word. Out of this love relationship comes a real attitude of joy. Amen. So how many believe that? All right, now let your face know it. There you go. For Samuel says, when the Spirit of God comes upon a man, he is turned into a different man. Amen. So we need to understand that, you see, if, if you, and I, I think I mentioned this on Wednesday, but after the resurrection, Jesus was unrecognizable. Amen. Before then, everybody knew him, but after the resurrection, he was walking with people that knew him prior to that, and they didn't even know who he was, because the anointing of God was so strong, oh my, my, that was so strong that he was unrecognizable. When we get saved, look at me, look at me. When we get saved, there's something about our countenance that changes. Amen. You can't keep looking and acting the same way before you got saved as you uh, as you did after you got saved. Amen. Wow. This morning we're going to continue uh, talking about destiny, but the title of my message is going to be um, <coughs> Falling in Love with Destiny. Amen. Amen. Falling in love with destiny. <laughs> one of the greatest pains and also one of the greatest joys. One of the greatest pains in the world is to know that you're not loved. One of the greatest joys in the world is to know that you are loved. Amen. Children, their hearts are torn apart because, because mama or mommy and daddy or whoever did not demonstrate the fact that they loved them. Husbands are grieved, wives are grieved this morning because they entered into a covenant with a man or a woman and somewhere along the line that spouse says, I don't like you anymore. I don't love you anymore. And you can say, well, I'm good with that. It doesn't matter to me. But deep down inside, there's an ache. There is a pain. You want to read a fantastic uh, Valentine's story? Read the story of Hosea. Perfect example. And Hosea kept loving Gomer with an unconditional love. Yes. Yes. Man, I mean, you read the story, and I think you would agree with me, she didn't deserve to be loved. Right. Yeah. But, but Hosea, the man of God, had experienced the love of God in his own heart, and he loved his wife yeah. unconditionally. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. You need to know that this morning that, that the truth is you are a representation of Gomer. And God loves you unconditionally. Yes. You have played the heart and I've played the heart and we've made vows and commitments to God and, 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 and we run out on God and we, do, we, we sold ourselves uh, uh, on the marketplace and, and we, we prostituted our lives, but Jesus still loves Come you on. with an everlasting love. Somebody say amen. amen. You need to know there's nothing that you can do this morning that God can make God love you any more or make God love you any less. Amen. amen. I may have broken his heart and Jesus may have, have, have wept because of things I've done. But in the process of weeping, you know what he does? He stays up all yeah. night praying for me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Fall in love with destiny. Yes. <coughs> for you that are taking notes, I, I've been talking about this for weeks and we're going to continue. There, 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 there's two destinies. There's a primary destiny and there's a secondary destiny. The primary destiny, every living person that has ever been born and will be born has the exact same destiny. And when I'm talking about this morning, I'm going to say, I want you to learn how to fall in love, first of all, with the primary destiny. It's, it's, it's amazing when we fall in love. We fall in love, we want to be with that person that we love. Mm -hmm. We want to spend quality time with that person. 
I remember when my wife and I were in Bible college and she was in one dorm and I was in the other and we'd spent, you know, gone to class there and spent all evening together. Then when we get home, we had to pick up the phone and we had to talk to each other on the phone, you know? And we just talked and we just talked, you know? And I'll tell you what, I, I would fall asleep many times, you know? And she told me the next day, you really fell asleep? Ah, yeah, but I still love you, baby, you know? Um, you want to spend quality time with that person. When we truly get saved, it is not a church experience. It is not a religious experience. Yeah. Something happens in my heart. I want to read what he wrote. I want to know him. Yeah. I want to spend quality time with him. Nothing else matters in the world except my love relationship with Jesus. Right. Amen. we got to feed this. Mm -hmm. The primary destiny. Write this down. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. God says this about you. Before you were born. Before you were in the belly. Before you were in the womb, God says, I knew you at that time, and I sanctified you, and I called you to be a prophet to the nation. Amen. Amen. So everybody in this room, God has already preordained in your life, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. You have been called. Now, whether you walk in that destiny or not, that is your business. God has not changed that. So I want you to fall in love with the primary destiny. I mean, really, right now, you need to think, you know, I'm so, I'm so in love with the fact that God knew me before I was born. Amen. God called me. I have the divine right to act like a prophet and a prophetess. Why? Because before I was born, God sanctified me to do that. Yeah. We've been, we, we talked on Wednesday about the gifting and we're really going to talk about understanding the prophetic and the prophetic is, is, is not this is not this wooey wooey uh, the say the Lord God. No, it is speaking life into someone else's life. Yeah. Jesus said the, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. When we, when we start crying out, God, give me a love relationship with you. If you truly believe that Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 has been activated in your life, then you have nothing to complain about. Amen. That's right. Oh, my, my. Yeah. I told you we're going to move this whole destiny thing down the road for you. Mm -hmm. The secondary destiny is that what God has called you to do. Everybody, everybody, you got a calling on your life. And I'm talking to people all the time. I just don't know what God wants me to do. I don't know how to, I just don't, I don't have a handle on this. I'm going to tell you them how to get a handle on this. You've got to fall in love with Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 first. And the more you come to that place of wanting to know who you are and the fact that you, and you are totally sold out the fact that you've been called to be a prophet to the nation, it is there that God will start revealing to you your secondary destiny. Some of this room, you've been called to be cooks. Others have been called to be mechanics. Others have been called to be cabinet makers. Some others God has called to sing. Some others God has called to preach. There, there is an individual call on our life, and we don't have to go through life aimlessly trying to find out, oh, I wonder if I should do this. I wonder if I should do this. No, you got to get back to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Mm -hmm. We're going we're, to we're do a whole lot talking about love this morning, but we don't look at me. <clears throat> love is work. Amen. 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 Love is not a feeling. Love is not an emotion. Love is an action. Jesus said, if you love me, you do something. If you love me, you keep my commandments. So now, we are very much aware if we love God or not, and you have to answer this individually. Okay? Are you obeying God? If not, then that area of your life, you're not in love with Jesus. You're still in love with yourself. Hello? Yeah. See, we're still we're still jockeying for the throne. I know God, I know God sits on the throne, but right now, right now I'm so wrapped up in myself. Lord, I, I'll go to church, I'll do all these things, but don't ask me to do those things I don't want to do. And God said, those are things I want you to do. So there's a primary destiny, and there's a secondary destiny. Falling I keep falling in love with him. Over and over and over and over again. 
I renew this relationship every day. Yeah. Lord, I, I just I just love being around you this morning. Man. Nothing else matters. I just I I I, I just want to I just want to talk to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Anybody understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Listen, I'm not talking about prayer. You should be praying. I'm, I'm talking about understanding the love relationship. It's amazing. It's amazing love of God. Mm -hmm. God starts your relationship off with an engagement. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah chapter one verse five. That's the engagement. He entered into a commitment to you. That's the engagement, and he ends the engagement. With a marriage. The marriage feast of the Lamb. Glory to God. This whole process. From the very beginning of time, God says, I want you to know I love you. The devil's trying to remind you how much you've messed up. Yeah. The devil's trying to remind you how many, how many times you've messed up, all the mistakes you made, all the vows you made and you didn't keep. He wants to keep you condemned and he wants to convince you that, that you know, you can't be used by God anymore. Hallelujah, mm -hmm. Lord, I take this in the overdrive. Brother, what is your name and first name again? You look at me. You are not here by accident. I'm speaking to the call of God that's been on your life for a long time. Yes, hallelujah. Let the hands and praise him, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm only here to confirm that which God has said. Mm. And for you, obedience is better than sacrifice. And God will open up heaven to you, and people will follow you as you obey God. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. I think I'm speaking to the evangelistic call in your life. Mm. We can talk later. We just met today. Yes. Glory. Thank you, Lord. There is an anointing. That God wants to rest in your life. And it happens in that place of understanding the love of God. Amen. You have been appointed as sons and daughters of the Most High God. Watch this, watch this. But the anointing always comes before the appointing. Mm -hmm. David was anointed to be king when he was a boy. And when David understood, oh my, my. When David understood Jeremiah chapter 1 5, when he understood that he had been anointed to be king, it did not matter what happened after that. Yeah, that's right. Why? Because I already anointed, I've been already anointed to be king. Amen. 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 Come on now. Are, you, are you seeing this? It doesn't matter what happened. God has already ordained and, and prophesied in my life that I'm supposed to be king. So let, let everything happen where it's going to happen. Because in, in the end, God is going to position me to be king. Those who need to get me. You have been called to be prophet, priest, and king uh, in, uh, into our world. Glory to God. Don't let the devil rob you of that joy relationship that you have with God. Because in that place of is in that place of joy and that place of love that God is going to prove Himself. Amen. And He that God didn't have to prove Himself. God wants to prove Himself. Why? Because He's in love with you. That's, he don't have to prove Himself. He's going to prove Himself because He loves you. Fall in love with your destiny. Let me see tonight. Let me, let, let, me lay, let me lay a biblical foundation. First verse, and of course you know it, but John 3, 16. For God so loved the church that he gave his only begotten son. Is that right? No, that's not right. That's not right. For God so loved the world For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So God entered into a place of sacrifice. Look at me. Love is sacrificial. Love gets on the other side of us. So we can awaken the person or the thing that we love. God didn't come to save the church. God came to save the world. Hello? 
And the church becomes a byproduct of understanding Jeremiah chapter 1, 5 that we've been called. And we come here week after week to celebrate and have a good time and get some teaching like this. And then we go back out into the world and do what the word says. Mm -hmm. I said this on Wednesday, but I'm going to say it again here this morning. Do you realize the miracles of Jesus? Jesus did very few miracles in a church building. Mm -hmm. right. He did his miracles at the marketplace and on the streets. Come on. Yeah. If he was doing his miracles here, the only people that would, would see the power of God is church people. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. That's right. But he did it at the city park. He did it at the courthouse. He did it at the jailhouse. He did it. Uh, he did it at marketplace. He did it uh, 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 Thursday night down in San Luis Obispo. Why? So the whole world could see Amen. the power Amen. and the sovereignty Amen. of God. Come on. God so loved the world that he gave his only God who has lived and should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Romans chapter 8, verse 37 through 39. They had all these things. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Is that right there? That is so incredible. Somebody need to hear this. What you are going through right now, you have already won. Amen. What you are going to right now, you have already won. You are, it seems like you're in the battle, but and you're going through it. But here's what it and all of these things. We are already more than conquerors. Amen. Somebody needs to hear that vice has got you in bondage, seems like. You need to know that the blood of Jesus has broken the talons off the enemy, and those things are, they cannot stay affixed to you. Amen. Because you are a child of God. Thank you, Lord. Are you following me? I was in the office the other day, you know, and I, and I, and I said something. I said something that, 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 that is so powerful. The Lord revealed a truth to me. And I know that some people here aren't going like this. But I'm saying, watch this. Watch this. No spirit filled couple has ever gotten a divorce. Now, then, be, 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 before you buy it, then you think about it. Totally impossible. No spirit filled man has ever had an illicit relationship. How, how can you say that? Because we cannot be spirit filled and willfully disobey God. Right. Hello? In order to go against the plan and the will of God, we got to say no to God. And at that moment, I'm struggling with the Spirit's filled life. I forgot to just throw that out. Just stir the pot a little bit. Come on. You, 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 you go and chew it a little bit. You know, that, that, that rubs us the wrong way. And I'm, and I'm not just talking about marriage. I'm talking about individuals. The, the sins that I have committed during that period of time, I'm wrestling. I'm dealing with. My spiritual life. Because you cannot say yes to God and no to God at the same time. Come on. That's right. Uh, Monique, don't, don't let the devil steal what God is ready to do. Amen. Yes. Right. Okay? Relax. Right. Deep breath. Come on, breathe deep. <laughs> We're good. See, there's some of you don't know what happened, but you know. I pay attention when I'm up here. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I get up and I start, I start seeing in the uh, spirit. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. The glory of God. And, and definitely know how to deal with stuff. Verse 18. I mean, I mean verse uh, 38. For I'm persuaded. Oh, I like this. See, some of you haven't been persuaded yet. You got a good idea. You got a thought. Paul put it good. For I am persuaded. In other words, I know this for certain. No one can talk me out of this. But my persuasion goes to the word God. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, verse 39, neither height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
So what you are going through right now, I'm going to tell you, now if you trust God, what you're going through, you're going to get through. Yeah. Amen. Hello? Yes. I'm not saying you're not going through it, but what you're going through, you are going to get through. Amen. Yes. Pastor, but it's real hard right now. Yeah. Hardness is the precursor to the miraculous. Amen. Love talks about commitment. It talks about just standing. You know, you know why a mother's love is so strong for her children? Because there's a commitment to her kids. No matter what that child has done, no matter what that child has done, I'll tell you what, and I'm nothing against the men that are here, but a, a mama's heart is different than a father's heart. Sorry. Sorry. And I believe, and we can talk about this later, but it's probably because of the little physical attachment that the child had with his or her, I mean, with his or her mother. Yeah. But see, there is a commitment. Thank you, Lord. What's wrong with so many people in the body of Christ? You give your life to Jesus, but your commitment only lasts. As long as it works in your behalf. Mm -hmm. Come on. I've committed myself to God just as long as it works for me. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. But there's a place that says, it doesn't matter. Neither death, nor height, nor, nor principality, nor angel, nor, nor things that come. Nothing is going to separate me from the love of God. Yes, amen. 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 So God lays a foundation that we need to fall in love with him. Let's, let's quickly get through the other ones. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. <clears throat> but God, who is rich in mercy and great in love, wherewith he has loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, he has quickened us together with Christ by the grace we are saved. Thank you, Lord. Lord. <coughs> Scripture says that his mercies are new every morning. Yes. Great is thy faithfulness. His mercies are new every morning. Nothing else matters. Aren't you glad for God's mercy? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Suppose God decided to give you what you deserve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> suppose, suppose God said, oh, here, let's, let's balance this stuff up. You know, based upon all the good things you've done, all the bad things, you know, and you're going to get rewarded uh, with whichever way is out the most. And uh, this will be an empty room this morning. <laughs> but it's amazing. The scales, the balance is a balance of mercy. Now listen, because you have received mercy, you need to learn how to give mercy. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Are you following? Yes. Yeah. Because you have received mercy, you need to learn how to give mercy. Right. Look at be. Tell you what, please. Be merciful with me. Yes, amen. Amen. Yes. I confess to you, I mess up. Uh -huh. We all do. I mess up. Mm -hmm. Oh, first of all, thank God for his mercy. Yes. Amen. And thankful. For those that get Jeremiah 1, 5, you tell you what, you'll be merciful to me. Mm -hmm. And you'll be merciful to someone else. Mm -hmm. Until you understand that, you'll be judgmental against someone else. Mm -hmm. And we want to judge everyone else's sin based upon on <laughs> our sin. Mm -hmm. Good word. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm not as bad as they are because mm -hmm. I don't yeah. smoke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're a liar. <laughs> you're a gossiper. We got to put ourselves in a place that we want to know the fullness of God and start flowing in supernatural giftings and fall in love yes, with our hallelujah. destiny. Yes. Lord, you need to know that you have been destined to be a woman of faith and power. And it's not about a church, it's not about a denomination, it's not about a group of people. It's about understanding the love of Christ has been poured out on your behalf. Glory to God. Yes. This is Help this, this next verse. Yes. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Yes. 
But God <coughs> commended his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Before I knew you, I ordained you to be a prophet to the nation. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for you. Wow. Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 17. I know I'm not going to get through everything I want to get through this morning, but that's okay. Zephaniah 3, 17. And the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. And he will save. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will rest in his love. And he will joy over thee with singing. Glory to God. You know what I, I, I kind of think the Father might say? Right now, as we're preaching, he's in heaven. And he says this. I keep falling in love with them. Over and over and over and over again. Yeah. He just keeps falling in love with us. Oh, he knows what you did. He knows what you did last night. Mm -hmm. He keeps he falling in love with you. Mm -hmm. He is saying somewhere along the line, the lights are going to come on, mm -hmm. and you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. God show us your grace. God's not so much concerned about where you have come from. He's concerned about where he's taking you. Yeah. Come on. Where are you going? He starts off with an engagement and he's moving into a marriage. Glory to God. In the process of all that, you know, we, he, he's cleaning up his bride. His bride's robe, spotted and tattered and torn. And the world is trying to make the bride, the church, look bad. He's coming back for a church. The wedding gown is clean, without spot or blemish. First Peter chapter five, verses six through seven. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares on him because he cares for you. Amen. Minister Bonnie said this a few weeks ago when she was talking about the sheep and understanding that cast position. I said that same word, casting all your cares. When a sheep gets in a cast position, he he's he he, wrote, he gets caught on his back and he gets caught was caught in a gully and his feet are up and there's nothing he can do to get himself back on his feet and it takes a good shepherd to come and lift and put him back on his feet. Here's what this scripture says: Take all your cares, putting them in a cast position, glory, before the good shepherd, because he cares for you. Cast the Lord cares on you. Somebody needs to hear this. You need to quit caring what belongs to God. Right. Yeah. Are you following? Mm -hmm. You need to quit caring what belongs to God. If it's a situation that you can't do anything about, then give it to God. Right. Amen. You can't work it out. You can't figure it out. You can't buy it out. There's nothing that you can do. And then there's situations in our family. There's absolutely nothing that I can do anything about it. And as my wife and I, we are grieved often. But finally, we got to get to the point and say, God, this is not my problem. This is your problem. Glory to God. And you know more about the situation than I do. So, God, we, we trust you. Deal with it. Amen. And because God loves us and because God loves them and God loves that situation more than I understand, God works it out. Amen. Are you getting this this morning? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Psalms 86, 15. And then we're just going to take a moment and we're move into the rest of the thing here. This, this is a biblical foundation that the Lord told me just to lay this morning. But thou, Lord, art a God full of compassion, gracious, and long suffering, and plenteous mercy. And truth. 
He's full of compassion. Real compassion comes out of understanding what love is. He's compassionate because he loves you. God is not vindictive towards you. I was talking to some guy some time ago, and he was going through a bad time, and he said, he said, Pastor, well, why is God trying to kill me? I said, dude, God ain't trying to kill you. If, if he was trying to kill you, you'd been dead. Because God don't miss. Amen. Well, what is he doing? He is trying to get you to understand Jeremiah 1.5 so he can move you into your secondary call. But right now it's tough. But be still and know that he is God. Yes. Yes. We go through stuff in the church and someone said to me just last week, they looked at me and said, Pastor, I don't know how you do it. I do it because I made a commitment to this. Amen. Amen. It is not always fun. I tell you what, I love our church, and you guys are awesome people, and I just, I love hanging out with you. I mean, it's, it's good. Mm -hmm. But it, it's not always good. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that doesn't change the call. Mm -hmm. Yes. That woman right there, she is a saint. <laughs> She's been married to me almost 43 years. She's a saint. How does she know? If I was married to me, I'd probably have shot me by now. <laughs> I got people with amen. amen. <laughs> but we enter into, see, this call on my life, this is. Let me look at me. This is not a job. This is a calling. And in this calling, there have been times I didn't know how it was going to work out. But because I understand it is a calling that was birthed in the love principles of Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Glory. See, so you guys are going to hear this in the next few weeks a great deal. Because before I was born, God called me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God started courting me before I was even born. <laughs> before I was born, I was set up. Oh, so are you. When you were still in your mother's womb. This, this, this is a really good message for the sanctity of your human life in this whole period. Because I tell you what, because because when 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 you when you were in that when you were in that water tank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one could see it, and you were growing, and you were moving. As a matter of fact, I put this on Facebook. You have a friend of mine on Facebook. I put this on Facebook just yesterday because I've got a, I got a picture of a, a 3D picture of a, of, of, a, of a baby inside the womb, and you see this little baby moving and growing, mm -hmm. fingers and everything else, and I wrote on there, this is what a prophet looks like. Mm -hmm. Before that baby was born, God called them to be a prophet to the I'm going to tell you what's been going on in your life. The devil is trying to steal your destiny. Come on. He's trying to steal your destiny by bringing external things, trying to destroy internal power. I'm going to say it again. He is bringing external things, trying to destroy internal power. He wants you to hear so many other voices rather than hear the voice of God. Pastor, that's good, but how do I get this? You pull yourself away. You set yourself away in prayer. You start making intercession. You start asking God for revelation of truth. And as God speaks, speaking, you write it down, and then you do what God says do, and you separate yourself. See, Paul says all things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. I'm not talking about sin issues. I'm talking about unnecessary stuff. I've got, I've got to make a choice to get rid of stuff out of my life. Why? Because as I get rid of this stuff out of my life, it makes room for this stuff to come into my life. Come on. Hello. The more junk I get out, the more goodness can come, come in. On. But God is not going to mingle the goodness with the junk. I said this last, you've heard me say it in church, I said this last week in his spirit, I mean people's eyes. I said, how many here want to live under an open heaven? Everybody raise their hand. Let's praise God. I said, if, that, if that's true, then you've got to shut the hell up. 
And that's not profane. I'm not talking. I'm not talking. About, I'm talking about you, you, you give your life to Jesus, but you're living your life over an open hell. But then you're crying out for the blessings of God. God cannot and will not pour the blessings, His blessings, out over an open hell. So we've got to close up the hellish things in our lives so we can receive the goodness of God. Amen. That's not guilt. That's not condemnation. Yeah. That, 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 that is understanding obedience. There is a place that God wants me to live and dwell and operate in, but it only happens as I start making concerted effort that I'm going to draw closer and closer to God. Lord says, work out your own salvation. Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Lord, you got to keep God's commandments. We've got to get on the, on, on the other side of it. self. It's amazing. We don't want, we really don't want God's advice. We want Satan's advice. Mm -hmm. I'll say it again. Deep down inside, we don't want God's advice. Because the devil's convinced us that's harsh. We want Satan's advice. Mm -hmm. My dependency cannot be on God, not my dependency on these advices, whatever, whatever that is. And it's different for each one of you. So I need, to, I need to recognize in my life the vices that I'm feeding. Lord, I'm going to surrender this vice so I can make room for your advice. Speak to me, Holy Spirit. Glory to God. We've got to start courting destiny. I don't have time this morning, but I've, I've done a lot of teaching on the difference between dating and courtship. And dating, see, we got single women right here in this room. We got single men in this room. You, you, you're trying to look for a date. That don't line up with scripture. I can tell you how to find your mate. You go deep down into God. Amen. You fall in love with Him. It's amazing who you're going to find there. You're going to find men and women that are deep in God. Amen. You got kind of quiet on me this morning now. I done gone meddling. I, I, I'm, I'm not saying you can't find friends outside, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about building a courtship with God. Read the story of Jacob. Jacob was a scammer. Mm -hmm. Jacob was a deceiver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jacob was always playing a game on somebody. And that's how they knew him that way. So Jacob goes to Laban because Laban had this daughter that was fine. Then he had this other daughter who was kind of ugly. <laughs> no, really. Her name was Leah. Leah. They, they said she was cross-eyed. They said she was slow, but you know. Where's Chase at? <laughs> he was cross-eyed. She was cross-eyed. So, so Jacob starts watch, Jacob starts courting Laban. He didn't court the Laban's daughters. Oh, somebody should get this. For you, for you parents here that got girls, little girls at home that are going to be women, don't let some boy come and sweep them off their feet. Make them court you, parents. Yeah. You want my daughter? Then you need to come and hang around my house without without you guys having any relationship. I want to, I want to see how you act. I want to see how you treat your mama. Hello? Yeah. Oh. We, we start doing this stuff. So we find that, Jab that, that Jacob uh, courted Laban for seven years. And he says, okay, my time's up. Now I want your daughter. Oh, no problem. And he brings out cross-eyed Leah. <laughs> I don't want Leah. I want Rachel. Oh, that's my 14-year daughter. I need another seven years. But because it was a love relationship so strong, he was willing to make an investment. Oh, somebody needs to hear this. 
the time that you start making an investment in your destiny. It, tell you, UPS, they are not going to bring your destiny. <laughs> it's just not going to show up. You need to get so alone with God, fall in love with Jesus, and, and talk to him on a regular basis, and God will cause you to take the right step. The Bible says the steps of the righteous are God ordained. Start walking in the right place at the right time. Oh, and God is never going to lead you down a wrong road. Hello? Amen. God is never going to put you in a bad relationship to work out so maybe you can get a good relationship. God ain't going to do that. Why? Because you're his son. You're his daughter. He wants to fall in love with you over and over and over again. And, 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 and according our destiny, we got to spend quality time. I'm asking you, and I, you know, what, how much time do you spend on the Lord? As sad as it sounds, I guarantee you there are people in this room that you have not picked your Bible up one day, one time this week, <laughs> other than when you do your community this morning. But then we want the blessings of God. God never does anything outside of His Word. So what do we do? We got we got to get back to the word. We got to fast. We got to pray. We said we got to we got to start combing the scriptures, spending quality time. I also wrote down here we need to start romancing the stone. Yeah. Here's the problem in marriages. When you first met your girlfriend, your boyfriend. You did all those special things. Yeah. Yeah, you bought them flowers. <clears throat> you bought them candy. <clears throat> you were on your best behavior. Yeah. You opened the door. You did all that. Wow, that was, that was, those, were, those were good times. Those, did, you, you remember when, when you got your first boyfriend, first girlfriend, there about, and you, you, your hands got all clammy? Everybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's like, wow, that song that we say, you know, give God that sloppy wet kiss and, and, our, and, our, and our, our heart just violently jumps in our chest. That's how it is with, with our relationship with our girlfriend and boyfriend way back then. Oh, but then something happened. We got married. <laughs> <laughs> and we quit doing. Well, somebody's here this and I didn't know I was going to go down this road. Tell you what, you got to do what it takes to keep your marriage That's right. and what you did to get your marriage. Mm -hmm. The other day I was parked over by the city park and there was an elderly couple. I was sitting on the bench and they came by and, they, and, and I mean, they, they, they got out, I think she was driving, but they got out of the car, you know what I mean, you know, and as soon as they got out of the car, he reached out, he grabbed her hand. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, and they just kind of, and they kind of stopped in front of me, and I said, excuse me. I said, I was watching you guys, and said, how long you guys been married? And he said, September will be, how many years is going to be? <laughs> <laughs> September will be 65 years. Oh. I said, are you kidding me? He said, no. I said, and you still hold her hand? He said, yeah, she's still my sweetheart. Aww. Hello? Yeah. Yes. Pastor, how long have you been serving God? I've been serving, really serving God ever since I was 18. Guess what? And he had 44 years and we're still holding hands. You know what? <coughs> there were times that I, I kind of cringed my hand and I tried to let go. And he wouldn't let me go. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He, just, he just wouldn't let me go. Mm -hmm. I just keep falling in love with him. Over and over again. Those love relationships work. God has a wonderful plan for your life. He wants you to spend all the time. He wants you to romance the stone. Jesus, that stone that the builders rejected. Fall in love with the cornerstone. Oh God, I trust you with my whole heart. I believe because such good things are in him and he's got my hand, now good things are in me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make it. Mm -hmm. Teach me. Lord, show me how to 
fall in love. Jesus. Today. God, let me go back. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God, return us. To our first love. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. You can make it happen. Look at me. This stuff I'm talking about, it is not a feeling. It's not an emotion. <clears throat> there is feeling and emotions attached to it, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about obedience is better than sacrifice. God wants to bless you with an everlasting love. Thank you. This is this is a church stuff. This is a spiritual Holy Ghost movement. Amen. And God's plan for your life. God's plan for your life. I'll pray for you here in a moment. I just felt the Lord say, so I need to stop and we'll continue this message up next Sunday. Challenging you. To do everything you can to fall in love with Jesus. Look at me. The love of God is not disrespectful. Well, I tell you what, there's something, something over here. You need to understand something here. If that man in your life is disrespecting you, you don't love him. Whether I'm talking, whether I'm talking about boyfriend or talking about husband, he don't love you. Because the love of God is not disrespectful, but it's honorable. Mm -hmm. you, you know, I, 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 call, I call her my queen. Not just in church. I call her queen. Do I always act like royalty? No, sometimes I act like the jester when I need to be the king. God loves you with everlasting love. He wants to excel you in his presence. He wants to lift you up. A pastor friend of a relative of mine down in North Carolina, his daughter turned 16, I think it was yesterday a few days ago, and on Facebook, he's standing there with his daughter. And it's her birthday, and she's got this tear on, she's got this, what's that thing called? A sash on her. And he said before his church, he said to his daughter, he said, Honey, until he shows up, I um, am he. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Come on. Yeah. 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 Isn't that good? Come on. Until he shows up, mm -hmm. I am he. Mm -hmm. Ladies, demand respect. How come? Because I'm a child of God. Come on. I'm a woman of faith. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord. Think about God. I don't have to demand God respect me. God respects me anyway. He wants to love us with everlasting love. We use the term, or rather, we use the term falling in love. That's the term that we use. The truth is, falling denotes an accident. Tripped into love. Okay? Jesus did not fall in love with us. He saw you a far away coming. And he says, I choose. I, he, he said, Del, I choose to have a love relationship with you. Does he know your background? Yeah. And he chooses. That's the plan. Thank you, Lord. That's the mercy. That's the grace of God. Thank you. Come on. Don't stand your feet. Father, that I'm asking for the divine impartation right now. In the name of Jesus. God, that we're moving, Lord God, this body into a place, Lord God, that we're going to start functioning in the supernatural. God, if we do this super, you will do it. If we do the natural, you do the super. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks. We give you, we honor you. God, raise up, Lord, these Jeremiah 1, 5, 
people. May they understand who they are in Christ. And fall in love with Jeremiah 1.5. So you can open up that second death, that secondary destiny. God, we give you thanks. Lord, we leave this building without your presence. Thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you for stopping in today and viewing the message from Pastor Gabe Abdelaziz. Our vision is that your life will be enriched by the teaching of the Word of God and experience victory in your life. We once again invite you to attend the Revival Center at 3850 Ramada Drive in Paso Robles, California. Worship services are Sunday mornings at 10 and Wednesday evenings at 7. For more information, go to alphabeth.org. Somebody here that's been watching this, God is calling you and bringing you back home. You run, you hit him. God knows where you're at, and He loves you with an everlasting love. And all you got to do is say, Lord Jesus, come back in my heart. I repent. I need you. I'm not going to run anyway anymore. I'm going to start running towards you somebody here, you need to hear this. This is a day that God is getting ready to change your life. And we at the Revival Center, we, we're here. We want to help you. We got plenty of people that we can uh, get back to you and, and they will pray with you and pray for you, <coughs> encourage you. And you're more than welcome to call us here at the Revival Center at area code 805-434-5170. It's 805- 434-5170 or you can email us at alphabeth a-l-p-h-a-b-e-t-h -H, at t-c-s-n dot net and we love you as, as I pray for those in this room I pray for you right now Father in the name of Jesus the next few minutes I pray that you're going to revolutionize our life give us ears to hear what the spirit of God is saying to us as well as to these that watch us by way of video. God, as we look at the signs of the times, we can tell that Jesus is coming. He's coming soon. Bless, Lord God, this time that we spend together right now. In Jesus' name.